Okay, so this is Crusader Kings for the PC. Um, this was created by Paradox Entertainment, I believe, uh, in 2004. There are many features that I'm not even going to be able to get through in this review, but let's just start off quickly. The sound, uh, the music is absolutely cool. It's great. Um, it works very stylistic. The graphics are very stylistic. Uh, works. Again, it's 2D like a lot of Paradox games, but it works. I like the whole style of it. That's all good. Um, you can pretty much choose any uh, dukedom, kingdom, or uh, count um, area that you that you wish. So, you know, there's a good healthy selection like in most games. You can play as whoever it was at the time. Uh, and this is set in the Dark Ages. You can um, sort of 1100s too. Uh, I think it's 1400s or something like that. Um, now let me just get straight to the point. This game is about having a, a family and making sure that you have good loyal subjects. Um, making sure that your lineage carries on and that you... Um, <coughs> to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what else there is. There's no real ranking system in this game. This isn't like you have to be in the top... Uh, top 10 or something like that, you get points or something. There may be a ranking system, but I sure as hell can't find it in this game. Um, and and so that's one downside. It's kind of like you're not, you're not too sure should you be expanding, uh, because they do make expanding really difficult in this game. So I'm just going to be showing you my Scottish campaign um, that I... Uh, that I played as. Um, so here we are. Now this is uh, this is my Scotland. So I've got bits in Ireland as well. But all these little other shields are basically um, my my magnets, my lords, um, who who own this sort of thing. You're encouraged not to own the land yourself because otherwise you don't get any real money from taxation. Only by delegation do you end up. Uh, having like money and stuff, um, which kind of makes sense. I mean, and it's and it's true to the the period. But the problem is that when you want to expand uh, and you need their support, you need their troops and stuff, then eventually they usually end up rebelling against you. Um, ultimately, they become really disloyal, and even if you beat them in battle, um, you know they they re they go up in arms. You beat them, you take over their provinces once again, and then you um, give those titles out to others, then those those ones that you've actually given them to start off as disloyal. I'm thinking, how does this work? I've just given you, like, the county of, you know, um, like, Berwick or whatever, um, and and they're just like, oh, uh, well, you know, we don't like you. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. And, and another point, I was, for some reason, I was in a war with Egypt at one point. I don't know how that happened. It just kind of happened. Now... Running your family, making sure you have children and stuff is actually quite fun, uh, and it's really engrossing. It's the, the big selling point of the game. It's the main thing of the game, making sure that you have plenty of claims on lands. If you want to have, uh, if you want to attack someone, you've got to make sure that you've got a claim on their title. So if I wanted to invade the north of England, I, I need to make sure that I either have a claim on that. Now you can only do that by either marrying into their family cleverly, which is way too difficult, or grabbing it by building up prestige, I think uh, the value is, if you build up prestige, then you can grab it, you can make a claim to it yourself, but it costs you points, but that is by far and away the best system to use. And and that whole grabbing tiles is good, it means that you can't, people can't just start fighting you f if they want to, they kind of have to have a claim on you as well, which is good. But, again, it goes back to this thing of, you know, if you want to expand, if you want to fight, you kind of need to use all your troops in all all your regions and some of your dukes and stuff will be reticent and reluctant to say the least to help you out and it'll be a massive uh, test of your, their loyalty which is really irritating um, oh, this this game could have been so good um, in that respect but it, it was let down by this, this whole thing of they're always up in arms I just wanted to run the country myself now I could see why uh, you know, you would have the system because it was true to the the history, but it, it was just irritating. You know, um, by after a time, after this king, I had a massive war in Ireland, and they all like uh, Ireland was only half the war, and you'd think fighting Sweden and the Irish um, uh, dukes and stuff would be enough, but no, I had all m all those blue ones you see. Um, go up in arms against me one after another, and my re uh, reputation went down. The whole uh, national kingdom stability went down, and it was ridiculous. I took them over. I said, "Well, you know, fuck you then. I'm taking back this land." So years of fighting, I finally did, 
every piece of land was myself, uh, my own. But naturally, because you can't rule every uh, piece of land yourself, you have to delegate, you have to give it out. So I gave it out to my children, as the King of Scotland. And wouldn't you know, they started becoming disloyal from the very first second. I was like, I've just given you land. You know, how, how can you be disloyal to me? I've just... You know, but anyway, this uh, what I'm showing you now is in a time when they w they weren't so disloyal. But um, as I said, I followed this up by um, a war in Ireland. Now, okay, you could say, well, you shouldn't be fighting in Ireland or wherever. You know, uh, replace Ireland with any uh, sort of area of the world. Um, you know, if if you're the uh, the Spanish, then you shouldn't be fighting in uh, like Portugal or France or wherever. But the point is that if if they want you to expand, if that's the point of the game, then they shouldn't make it so difficult to call on your own, you know, your own magnets, your own lords. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, that was the main gripe. My other main gripe was the fact that building buildings at the beginning, everything takes so long. Um, building structures like castles and and every, anything that you basically want to improve your thing, uh, your your lands takes so long. It's so expensive. You don't have the money for it in the beginning. And especially if you start off as a place like the Kingdom of Scotland, which is an actual kingdom, um, as opposed to if you start as a dukedom. I mean, imagine starting as an obscure dukedom. There's no point really because you're going to be so poor you can't even improve your own um, your own lands and create more soldiers. So, um, <laughs> really, the marrying system is very interesting. You know, marrying your kids off, and I, I don't know if it's an expansion pack or a add-on that I've got, but um, th they created a system where you could basically see all the potential brides, which is the best thing they added to this game. Before, you had to literally go around every province just manually and check if they had 16, 17-year-olds, which is uh, the women of best childbearing age. Um, I always cheat in this game to kill off my wives after a certain amount of years when they can't produce children. That sounds mean, then you really ought to play the game because that's the only way you can keep on uh, keep your family up because they, they all start dying of sickness and stuff, so, um, so, yeah, really, this, this game could have been so much better, the graphics and the, uh, the sound work fine, um, the system is in itself quite interesting, the character traits are great for each of the, your family members, they m make them real characters, all these events where you could en end up having bastard children and stuff is, is really good. Um, and having enemies at court and stuff, that's all really well done. But when it comes to expanding, when it comes to you wanting to take over lands and also improve them, you know, there's very limited scope and it's really made difficult by the disloyalty of your own men. I killed my own king just because he wasn't liked and his successor wasn't liked anymore. It, it carried on as if it was a, a natural state of progression. I was like, well, hang on a second, they've got a new king. They shouldn't. Their loyalty should go up to 100 at that point, but it didn't. And you know, and you can't really run it on your own because then your your level of income goes down to like you know less than ten usually. So I kept on having the stab in the back icon come up saying someone's disloyal, their loyalty going down all the time. So it was a horrible, it was a vicious cycle of just uh, you know. And these are his siblings. I'm thinking, you know, if he can't put his own brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, give them lands, then who who the fuck can he give them to? So that was a real pain in the ass for me. And, you know, I I really found this game irritating, and I'm going to give it a bad review. So anyone who did like this game, that's cool. Um, I'm just showing you how you can uh, change your kind of cabinet, sort of. It's uh, your advisors, they... Uh, having a better advisors basically means that you, uh, you can run the country better. Um, so anyone who did like this game, don't take this personally, but I really found this irritating. I, c I played hours and hours on this game, which is the only reason why I'm not going to give it less than 5. But on the other hand, it really irritated me how good it could have been and just wasn't. So in the end, I'm going to give this uh, game a score of 5.5. .5. If you like this game, as I said, um, you don't have to listen to my review. Um, it's a very personal thing, but uh, I found this game very annoying. Um, it missed by an awful long way. So, that's me.